everybody. Welcome back to Full Circle with Joyce. And thank you once again for your company this morning. I see you guys on Facebook already engaging with me this morning. Weru Paul, you say Nyeri Ndani, Brian Ibrahim. Uh, you say you're tuned in Ukiwa Naivasha, Kabati, Mary, Lazarus, watching us from Karia and Gesha. Asante Sana for the compliments as well. Iman James, good morning to you too. Steve Malone, thank you. Uh, Oindi, Jeffrey Oindi, Cecilia Nanquita, <laughs> you say you're in a blissful mood. Kanis Mwingai, or Mungai, you say love you fantastically. Wow, I love you back fantastically too. Um, uh loves josh cute girl uh thank you for your compliments there uh and i see all of you guys are santeni sana 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 all right guys um and also actually let me shout out uh, our first person who sms'd in today caroline from juja uh you say good morning thank you for the compliments you say your week has been busy but you made sure to catch up with every episode of full circle with joyce thank you you're 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 super great for doing that and i really do appreciate you all right guys so um today on viewpoint we want to talk about uh, promoting local content but just before we do I'm sure you guys have been seeing on Twitter, you know, the hashtag Nairobi County uh, trending. Now, ousted Nairobi County Assembly Majority Leader Abdin Goyo now alleges that Mike Sonko is the city's top cartel who has been plundering public resources and pretending to be clean. Um, and of course, now this has caused a lot of stir and uh, lots of accusations now being hailed concerning that. Uh, another says corrupt MCA Nguyo, um, that he's being used by cartels to cause disturbances and mayhem in Nairobi County, that he is behind the manufactured water crisis in Nairobi County, which evidences are he compiling about Governor Sonko, if not manufactured lies and propaganda. So... Clearly, there's something going on within the county. But let me first introduce my guest, and maybe they can help us sort of <laughs> try and unpack this situation. With me, I have uh, Tekla Joanne, who's a story creator, writer, uh, production designer, uh, and the um, acting director of Tech Services. Is that true? <laughs> well, no, okay. Uh, production designer and an aspiring film producer. All right, and I also have Alex Mulwa, who's the technical service manager, which in other professions would be the COO of the Kenya Film Commission. So he's in charge of the mandate and the functions of the Kenya Film Commission. Good to have you both here on the show. Thank you. Right, so Nairobi County, um, clearly there's you know some sort of tension going on between there. I mean, as you look at just the county in general, uh, not just the administrative challenges that we're seeing, but even Nairobi as a county as a whole, right? There seem to be so many different challenges that that are in many ways unwarranted for 2019. As residents of this <laughs> county yourselves, what are the, some of the things that frustrate you most about where Nairobi is currently at? Um, thank you very much. Uh, for me personally, I can say transport is one of the main mm. challenges, the congestion in terms of traffic and all that. Yeah. I think it actually leads to a lot of wastage of time Absolutely. and also personal resources and it creates, a, it, it contributes a lot to the pollution of the environment. Absolutely. And I mean, this past week obviously was even more intense with the conference. But I think if Kenya wants to sort of position itself in that way that we're going to be holding these sort of international conferences, if we can't even deal with our traffic on a regular basis, uh, clearly they're going, those issues are magnified by the time we're doing these sorts of high level events because I what I complain this week. <laughs> Spending 16 minutes on, you know, 200 meters of a road stretches is, is not is not a good use of anybody's time. What about you? Well, for me, I'm still new in Nairobi, just moved to Nairobi, but... Oh, okay, welcome. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, but the cost of living, I'll say that. The cost of living. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a bit high. It is. So, yeah, Where were so, you living before? Uh, Western Bungoma. Yeah. Yeah, so moving to Nairobi, it's a bit different. And I mean, I'm still young and I'm still new, so trying to find a job and paying rent and bills and everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite high. 
Okay. Yeah, but so transport, cost of living. Yeah. Um, if we are to pick any sort of low-hanging fruit, because now transport in Kenya, I mean, as yeah, much yeah. as our governor went <laughs> and did some tourism <laughs> somewhere else looking at trams and whatnot, yeah. um, if we are to pick some of the, I guess, what you would say would be low-hanging fruit, things that maybe hopefully you think we can change tomorrow, because trans transport, I think, would be a whole infrastructure story. Cost of living is the yeah, whole yeah, economy. Yeah. <laughs> um, by the time we talk about debt and everything else, what are some of the things that you think maybe the county government should begin focusing on just to give us and most Kenyans, most residents of this city, you know, just a, a chance at a better tomorrow? Anything come to mind? Well, I, I can say that they're, they're putting their efforts, they're trying, but there's still room for improvement. And uh, what I can actually say from it, uh, let's look at uh, aspects of uh, cleanliness mm. and maintaining our environment. Absolutely. Those are big ones. Um, we've been talking a lot about the environment. We know Nairobi River is heavily polluted. Um, even the sort of food that is now being grown in Kenya, I, I think it's just the stem of dirty environment, dirty rivers. It's even stemming into our food. Um, what about for you? I know you're, you're new into the city, as you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. But as, as for me, I'll talk more of uh, supporting talent. At the end of the day because you find a lot of us we have we, we we are creators we create a lot of content but you see you're being told the money is in the cinemas but right now if you look at the films that are produced in Kenya and go to the cinemas there are very few and you find we don't even have at the end of the day we lack something to eat because we expect to get something from that so I believe like if the county government can support these young talent, all these movies that are produced, to just go to the cinemas like other movies. You'll find like movies from the from Hollywood will premiere in Kenya. You'll find them in cinemas every day. But our local films, they're not premiering in the, in the new cinemas. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's an interesting point there that um, Tekla is raising here. And in fact, uh, it, it will segue nicely into our main subject for the day, which is on promoting local content. Um, and I really want to pose um, Tekla's concerns to you, Alex. Uh, whose mandate is it really at the end of the day as far as how um, and where, you know, films are promoted? So to her point, you know, is it that we need to is it that we need to sort of put a cap or a ratio on the number of international films that are, you know, shown in these because these are private cinemas too, right? So mm -hmm. it's a it's a bit of a thin line, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, let me first uh, start appreciating my CEO, who was supposed to be here, and I'm here on his behalf so that at least I can be able to talk on behalf of the commission. Well, the mandate of uh, development promotion and marketing Kenya's film industry lies squarely with the Kenya Film Commission, mm -hmm. which I work for. And as you rightfully put it, I'm uh, currently in charge of the technical directorate. And the technical directorate, it's the one which is in charge of the core functions of Kenya Film Commission. Matters to do with the promotion, matters to do with development, and matters to do with the marketing of the film industry. Mm -hmm. So we as a commission, we've actually put our efforts to market and promote the development and growth of the local film industry. And as Tekla put it, we are working very closely with some of the counties so that at least we can be able to come up with uh, some of the policies, advise them on the policies, and come up with the uh, regulations and strategies that are actually going to facilitate mm. the growth of the local film industry. Mm -hmm. So where would you say we are in terms of producing local content then? Well, I can say if I compare it way back, like 10 years ago, we've seen a big growth. We're actually having a very big growth. And uh, one of the things that is actually impressing me is that I'm seeing the young uh, generation coming into this industry strongly. And uh, anytime they come into this industry, they're doing a very good job. Right. And they've actually started to appreciate that uh, arts can be a way of life. For a very long time, it was just being seen as a way of entertainment right. and it was not being appreciated as something sure. that can be able to place uh, food on the table. Right. Speaking of the young, I, I mean, creativity in general is something that we should encourage across, you know, all phases of life. But you find, of course, a lot of young people really discovering themselves through the creative arts. Um, but at the same time, those creative arts influence culture, they influence public opinion, they influence trends and attitudes and behaviors and um, how then do we balance between that freedom of expression and 
sort of safeguarding you know the moral fabric of a society or the social fabric of our communities when we know that this creativity can really directly impact you know attitudes behaviors even for the next generation and for you as a young budding you know artiste you know what is your take on that as far as where where does freedom of expression now become eh, eh, that's too much <laughs> i think for us in the creative industry it starts with, with the writer you as a writer you've been given freedom to express what you have inside of you to uh, educate young people to educate ev every generation so sometimes I feel like writers we go overboard at some point because we're supposed to be role models because what you see you emulate that at the end of the day mm -hmm. so as a writer if I do s I, I write something that that's why uh, Kenya Film uh, Classification Board comes in wherever you produce a film because they have to see it and uh, actually like put guidance on it. Is it something that a kid can watch? Is it something that only grown-ups should watch at the end of the day? Right. But it's our work as the creatives to actually educate people at the end of the day. Okay. Yeah. Alex, I want to put that question to you as well because we've seen um, that even crossing from film even into music, we've seen a lot of music in Kenya, you know, be put under question because of its content so you know from your perspective working with the organization that you do is there a point at which you then say okay this freedom of expression um, needs to be tamed if you will <laughs> well uh, as a commission from where we sit first and foremost we encourage self-regulation uh, which we fall short of saying self-discipline. Mm. Anytime you are doing something, you don't need to be policed. And uh, that's what we, we believe. That uh, for the creators, one, for us, we don't want to curtail your creativity. We want you to be as creative as you can. But again, knowing that film is a very strong tool of communication, it's going to educate, it's going to inform, it's going to influence behaviors. It's also upon us to take that as our own responsibility mm. and be responsible citizens, be responsible creatives, filmmakers, so that whatever content you're channeling out, let it be within the acceptable standards. Okay. I issues to do with the uh, freedom of uh, expression well, the Constitution actually gives that um, opportunity for freedom of expression. Mm -hmm. But I also believe even yourself in your house, there are limits that you've put. Sure. There are things that you cannot encourage within your space. Okay. So uh, it all depends on what we have to do. But as a government, it has also set up uh, structures, a regulatory body that is Kenya Film Classification Board. Yeah. And the main role of the Kenya Film Classification Board is just to ensure that the right content reads the right people okay. and us as Kenya Film Commission will continue promoting that space and telling people be as creative as you can come out with whatever content you have and then it will be classified all right well we're going to take a short break right now but when we come back I want to touch more on this question about self-regulation uh, and self-discipline that you're talking about and specifically something that you also mentioned about you know when you're out there in the creatives as a film person a media person um, a singer that you're a role model because we've also seen some artists come out very strongly to say nah I'm not anybody's role model. <laughs> I'm just doing me. And I'd want to know what you guys think about that. Double two, triple nine. If you're in the public eye, are you automatically a role model, whether you want to be or not? Is that just something you should assume um, and adopt in the way that you carry yourself? Double two, triple nine is the SMS line. You can also catch me on Facebook at Switch TV Kenya. We'll be back shortly. Right, guys welcome back to full circle with joyce thank you once again for engaging with us this morning you can send in your feedback to double two triple nine that's the sms line you can also reach me on uh, social media at switch tv ke on instagram and at switch tv kenya on facebook and twitter and i'm asking you guys this morning you know um since we're talking about promoting local content but of course we've seen some questionable content actually get banned or put 
pulled down from the internet. Um, you know, as soon as you're a, a public personality, are you automatically supposed to be a role model, whether you feel like it or not? What is you guys' opinion on that double two, triple nine? And Alex, um, you had talked about this idea of self-regulation and self-discipline. What would be your response to that question? You know, once you're in the public eye, you know, whether you feel like it or you don't feel like it, you know, are you supposed to be a role model? Because um, a few of our prominent personalities here in Kenya have come out very strongly to say that they're not and they don't want to be held to that standard because they feel that they're not responsible for anybody else's life or actions. Well, you cannot run away from that anytime you become a leader. Anytime you become a celebrity, everything comes with a responsibility. Mm -hmm. And one of the responsibilities is that uh, if people are looking upon you, then you have to exhibit the right kind of behavior, whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. So everything comes with a responsibility. And for us within the film industry, what we did just to ensure that we're encouraging that kind of uh, behavior is that we've come up with the Kalashin International Film and TV Awards, mm -hmm. which will be taking place in November 30th at yeah. the Safari Park Hotel. And the whole reason is because we want to recognize the good work that the people within this industry are actually doing. Mm -hmm. Tekla being one of the people who've actually been nominated uh, within the student category yeah. for having done good work. Yeah. So as we look at the aspect of uh, self-responsibility, ensuring that you're exhibiting the right thing, mm. those are some of the things that we look at. And I believe even the Nomination Academy, as they go through these films and they look at the best actor, look at the best TV host, we must look at what message do we want to send out to the general public? Sure, what absolutely. are we encouraging? The content that we are talking about, what is it really propagating? Mm. Is it in line with our morals? Is mm -hmm. it in line with what the government wants? Is mm -hmm. it in line with what the sort of the citizenry, society. citizenry yeah. we want to see. Yes, what, what do they want to see? What do they want to hear? And what are you actually promoting from the content that you're giving? So for me, I'll still insist uh, as a part of the commission that we will continue um, promoting and um, advocating for the aspect of uh, self-regulation, yeah. self-discipline, yeah. and for anyone who is a role model, be it in film or in any other field, Kindly right. just know that you have a responsibility. Even as a citizen, anytime you are walking on the streets, you've got responsibility of ensuring that you are exhibiting the right thing to the society. Right, right. And uh, certainly there, Alex, you've, you've touched on um, a lot of what the selection committee is looking for with, with you know, who they nominate and, and who they hope then would take the award um, as far as the sort of characteristics and character that they exhibit. And congrats to you, um, Thank you. on your nomination. You're nominated you. in the student category? Yeah, the student category and also the general category. Mm -hmm. we, we have five nominations. Then again, as a production designer, I've been nominated. When you say we have five nominations, it's as who? Uh, Multi-Chase Talent Factory, yes. uh, the student section, we did two films mm -hmm. which have been nominated for Best fe Feature Film and in the students category also Best Student Feature Film okay. and Production Design. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. And in fact, Mvotier, <laughs> and as you vote for how to Votier Pia, because yeah. Full Circle with Joyce has also been nominated, or rather myself, as a Best TV Host. And uh, I thank you guys for making this show what it is, and we'll be sharing more details about that as we go along. But, um, you know, you're talking about film, yeah. right? And, um, you know, sometimes I wonder, I feel like in some ways, like we've really come to appreciate Kenyan music and maybe like Kenyan theater. But I, I wonder how our films are actually doing. What would be your assessment as far as how Kenyans appreciate Kenyan film? Uh, as per now, I don't think there's much appreciation on the films because you find in a year, you'll only see like five films being had out there. I mean, up to now, we've just seen Nairobi Half-Life, maybe Rafiki and Supermodo those are the only films you hear of. It's because most of our films don't get a cinematic release at the end of the day, so people don't even get to hear about them. So the question then is, what does it take to get that cinematic release? Is it a question of funding? Is it a question of the regulation or the bodies, the agencies that should be supporting it? Is it a question of just a lot more needs to pump to be pumped into marketing? What would you say is the way to fix that issue? Uh, first of all, uh, when you look at the distribution sector 
in the film industry it's pretty low and so without the distribution sector actually our films are not going to get out there so it's about support first from the county government and the government as a whole to support the industry so that we can get the right distribution and also our films can go out there because you you see our films we can't compete out there mm. because one we don't get to release it in the country and without you releasing it in, in the country you can't release outside of the country first mm. yeah so i guess just the funding the film sector to be funded at least at the end of the day yeah. right alex this question about funding though is a is a huge one because when you look at international movies and the sort of budgets that they say have gone into those films i mean we're talking about millions upon millions of dollars some is just in, you know, paying the actors. And then, of course, there's an entire crew and the set and whatnot. So, you know, is it is it just the funding or is it also that, you know, we also as Kenyans haven't shown enough, like, demand for Kenyan film to create the need for that level of funding? What would you say? Um, there are many factors that normally do come into play when we are talking about uh, film production. One... In terms of uh, funding, funding people should understand that first business, uh, sorry, film is a business, and it depends on the model. Number two, anytime you are coming up with content, it's good for you to research to find out who I, who do you want to talk to. Mm. Is there a market for your content? Mm -hmm. That again is going to dictate on how you actually want to execute your production. Right. So. It's true most filmmakers have actually come to us as a commission and have said that there's a challenge in terms of funding. And as a commission, we did uh, advise the mainstream government, that is our parent ministry, and um, they got to hear us and uh, we were given a new mandate. And one of the functions that we've been given is actually to set up a film fund. And uh, that's something that we are actually working on. Um, currently, what we've agreed to do is uh, to engage the Kenya Bankers Association. Mm -hmm. We are in talks with them. We are trying to tell them how to come up with a product that is actually going to be able to facilitate financing for the filmmakers. At uh, affordable interest rates. At affordable <laughs> interest rates, yes. Of course, they told us the challenges is that we have to make film to be something that is bankable. Mm. So we've gone ahead to look at how we're going to look at that. And we realized that there's the aspect of intellectual property. Yes. And this intellectual property brings about royalties. So we said, why can't we access these royalties and we want to bring all the CMOs together, the ones that are collecting the royalties on behalf of the musicians and the filmmakers, so that we can come up with what we are calling a guarantee fund. Okay. If we bring up this guarantee fund, it's going to act as the collateral so that the filmmakers and the people within the creative sector can be able to use to access the financing yeah. from these financial institutions. As we get ready to wrap up, it's good that you've brought up intellectual property because for a long time, many creatives will complain about pri piracy uh, in Kenya and how you know the, the systems for them to actually earn from their work are, are very fluid even in a sense. Of course, we've seen a lot of trouble even with these CMOs and these uh, bodies that are supposed to be collecting royalties. Naezo to check za, yoni ungatu ya umezitatu. If you get what I'm saying, the sort of amount that people have been paid. Um, so this clearly is something that goes beyond the funding. I think, as you're saying, there's a lot of policy changes that do need to take place as far as lifting the place of the creative arts industry in Kenya to a place where people can actually live mm -hmm. off of it. Would you agree? Yes, I, I totally do agree with you. And uh, one thing I can say is that piracy is not just a challenge in Kenya. Piracy is a challenge world over. And uh, us as a commission, we are working very closely with the Kenya Copyright Board. And as we speak today, we're in Bomet and we're actually talking to the stakeholders and we want to enlighten them on okay. how best to go about this issue of piracy. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Alex and uh, Tesla, for being here today, uh, Tekla. Um, it's been a great discussion with you both. Unfortunately, my time uh, is gone and I need to wrap, wrap up. But once again, do remember you can vote for Tekla uh, at the upcoming Kalasha Film Awards. So I to promote. We have to promote local content. I'm an Amnagan. Yes. <laughs> so do support her and uh, everybody else that you're interested in. Be sure to head over to the Kalasha Film uh, International Film Awards website and you can also vote for myself as you do that with that said asanteni sana again for your time we're going to take a short break right now as we get ready for our second hour of the show coming up next i'll see you at 9 a.m <laughs>